Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, experience support for confident business makers. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Anton Skornikov. Anton is passionate about agile project management methodologies, and he holds the ASEEMS Certified Scrum Tra- Trainer Certification, a distinction shared only by 250 individuals globally awarded by the Scrum Alliance. Anton's dedication to organizational collaboration and agile principles in the public and nonprofit sectors led to his current role as co-founder and managing director of Agile, uh, Agile.coach, I believe it is. In, in this capacity, he has coached nearly 100 organizations and thousands of individuals in the art of slicing work. Anton is also the author of the upcoming book, The Art of Slicing Work, how to navigate unpredictable projects, which is the subject, sort of, of our conversation today. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Anton. Hi, uh, thank you for having me. Well, first off, Anton, why do you do what you do? Oh, that's uh, that's a big question. All right, so um, first of all, I'm, uh, I I want to acknowledge that most of us are spending our exquisite attention when we go to work. This is the eight hours of our main time that we invest in most, almost all of our days. And when we do work, we can have an impact or we cannot. And basically what I'm very passionate about is to help people have an impact when, whenever they spend those eight hours of their work. And very often they don't, not because they aren't, skilled or they're not or they're incompetent very often a lot of competent people work together but the system that they're working in is setting them up for fail for failure even though you know everyone invests their best and that's kind of the pain that i'm hoping to help with my work and you're working a lot obviously with agile project management and before we started recording i was mentioning that that my history and the history of erp implementations has been more waterfall talk about the transitioning really the mindset from running projects on a waterfall basis to an agile basis mm. cool so so from my point of view i would love to frame it to frame this question differently because whenever i come across such a discussion like well, how do we go instead from waterfall to agile or agile versus waterfall? The discussion tends to be very philosophical, the very, um, very much based in what do we believe, how people are, and what do we believe would work and whatnot. And when I when I work with organizations, especially with the C suite of an organization, these people have decades of experience of how they have seen their organization work. And they have not just beliefs that come out of, you know, reading books. They have beliefs that are founded in quite a lot of experience. So having philosophical discussions, even if you are able to have the best argument, is is really not helpful. Because in the end, people are left with, well, but I know that it hasn't worked like that for 10 years. And then I've seen this work sometimes differently. So, so my approach uh, whenever I'm in this kind of discussion, is very pragmatic. Is to start with speaking about results, because I've never seen anyone. So, so, so basically, the core of waterfall, you could say, or, or the core of classic approach, a traditional approach, is to believe that once you plan something well, you it will work out fine. Only if we plan well, it will work out. That's kind of the core thing behind there, and. When you are working with in, in, in areas that are unpredictable, and you, you just mentioned ERP systems, right? So implementing a new system that helps people work in their organization differently, track their numbers, track the sales, and so forth. Um, whenever you do a project like that, you will notice that whatever you plan and how, how, however, however long you take for planning up front, once you implement this, there's going to be a lot of surprises on your way. And those surprises, as is the nature of surprises, they will have implications that may actually endanger the very core assumptions that you had in the very beginning of your plan. You, you may want to implement an ERP system to have better dashboards or better, better numbers on something. But then you realize, oh, once you start tracking, those numbers or, or the numbers that you thought would be useful 
are not going to be existing at all because now you understand your business better and it's actually something different that you want to know. Find out. Those, this is just one example of, of some ERP projects I, I, I've seen. And so, so when you take into account that you will, you, you will face such surprises, you will realize that actually being pragmatic and being uh, and, and actually gaining results is not about a lot of planning up front. But the question is, what is the smallest thing that we can deliver, actually deliver to our customer, give them in their hands and get the feedback from that so that we can see it works, it, it helps them. And, and very often when we are used to doing uh, large ERP projects, for example, like two, hour, two years of implementation and, and then hoping for moving the, the lever in the very end of this project from the old system to the new ERP. When, when we've experienced this two years project, we're just not used to breaking them up into small pieces of something deliverable to our clients. That's kind of the first mind shift that we need to know. And that's actually what you, what you, when you presented me, what you called slicing work. So slicing work is basically about how do you divide a large project or a small project into pieces that are deliverable, useful, and can, can help you verify whether you are on the right track or not. I think part of the challenge is, is that, and, and I think you're right, the, the people who are, 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 are set in a mindset uh, of waterfall are thinking that what you're talking about, Anton, sounds a lot to me like no planning. That's what it no. sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, so, that's not the case, right? We, we have like 30, 40 years of, 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 of agile software development. And, uh, and, and, you know, when we talk about agile software, well, what, what I'm talking about, and I'm counting myself to, 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 to this group, is we are nerds. Like most people in agile, <laughs> we are nerds who have been basically uh, creating protocols, creating, formalizing very basic processes, also management processes that existed. And we've done this very well for software. But we have, but 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 there is more and more areas of of work uh, that are completely independent of software. And even though you are speaking about you know implementing ERP software, but you know the, the biggest part of the project is actually not the software development part. It's actually having people use the software in a way that you hope them that they will actually do. The hardest, the the, the most amount of surprise is not coming from technology. The most amount the, the surprises come from people actually using this technology, and. And so no, um, it's not a, it's not about a lack of planning. It's it is about planning, but it, the the planning happens on a different scale. So we typically don't want to plan features, for example, but we want to we want to plan outcomes. So we want to have people, you know, track, you know, for, for lack of a better example, uh, track uh, the orders in a new way, so that we have more data tracked with this happening. With which feature they're going to do that. I don't care. Is this going to be tracked automatically? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what is going to be the smallest thing that we can deliver so that it actually happens. And it kind of and 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 when when you start looking from this uh, fr- from this perspective, um, it it is in the beginning quite painful. <laughs> so that you need a lot of examples, and that's basically what the book is about. That that that, that, that you just said. It's about giving and getting a lot of examples from different projects, so you can see and understand what this is like. And then once you start doing with it with you, in in your own subject matter, uh, well, you you realize what the implications of these are, and and you can you know you can do it. And the the, the earlier you start, the the more competitive advantage you have, I guess. And Anton, we have an exit question that we ask all of our guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours, and why are they a hero? <laughs> all right. Um, you may be hearing this from my from my last name. I was born in Russia, even though I've spent last uh, my last 30 years living in Germany. I'm, um, I'm still quite politically connected. Um, and actually, my uh, my hero, you know, he died just, just a month ago. This was Alexei Navalny, who was uh, actually... I believe murdered by Putin um, in, in in prison. I think all of the newspapers wrote about it, and uh, the the reason he's a hero is because I, even though I was living in Germany, I participated in his campaign in two thousand thirteen. He tried to become a mayor, and and um, what was so particular about this was that he, he actually was agile. He he's done like he he presented to the whole world how you can do an agile campaign and leverage the power of motivated people that rally behind your cause uh to 
be much more effective and much more impactful than uh, you know an opposing force that actually had a budget that was uh, one thousand times bigger. And he was quite successful. You know, there was only you know <laughs> police that could end this uh, this fight. But um, yeah, that's 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 a hero of mine. <laughs> And lastly, Anton, how can somebody contact you? Oh, there is a website called slicingwork.com where you can find all info about me and uh, about the book and so forth. All right. Anton Skornikov, thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you, Ed. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.